In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to factor quadratic expressions that I've divided into five different difficulty levels. Level one being the basic or the easiest level where the coefficient of x squared is going to be positive one. And also the sign in front of c will be positive. When we have a positive right here for the value of c, then the signs will be the same. They'll be either positive, positive, or negative and negative. And since we have a negative value for the value of b right here, it's going to be negative and negative. Again, when the third number or the c value has a positive number, then the signs will be the same, and that sign will be from there. Next, we want to go ahead and write down all the pairs of numbers that gives us 48 when multiplied, which are 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, and 6 and 8. Next, when again the signs are the same, we're going to be adding these two numbers like this, 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, until we get the one that gives us a 26, which is from 2 and 24. Then, we're going to put 2 and 24. Then the question is, is it okay if we put 24 in the front and 2 in the back? Yes. When the signs are same, the numbers are switchable, meaning we could put 24 here and 2 here or vice versa. And now here in our second example, notice that the sign in front of 24 is once again positive, which means that the signs will be the same once again. However, this time because the second value or the b value has a positive value, the signs will be both positive and positive. Once again, if this is positive, the signs will be the same. If the second is positive, they will both be positive. Then, just like we did before, we want to find all the pairs of numbers that multiplies to 24, which are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. And one more time, when the signs are the same, we want to go ahead and add these numbers, where 1 plus 24 is 25, 2 plus 12, 3 plus 8, and 4 plus 6. And we want to find the one that gives us 11. And when we add 3 and 8, we get 11. And we'll put the 3 here and 8 here. And like I said before, we could put the 8 here and the 3 here. These two numbers are switchable. For level 2, for factoring quadratic expressions, notice that the c value or the constant or the third term is negative. When that, the third number or the third term is negative, we always go plus minus or opposite signs of each other. Once again, we're going to find all the numbers that multiplies to 12, which are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. This time, because this or the third term is minus, we want to go ahead and subtract these two numbers. We're going to go 12 minus 1, 6 minus 2, and 4 minus 3, and find the one that gives us a difference of 4, which happens to be 6 minus 2. And here, it's important where the 6 goes. You can't just put 6 in the front or 6 in the back. You have to think about the sign in the middle. In this case, it's negative, which means that we'll take the bigger number, the 6, where the negative is, and we'll put the other number, the 2, where the positive sign is. So there you have it, folks. It's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 6. Then here's another example where, once again, the c value, or the, the third term, is going to be negative, which means that the signs are going to be opposite of each other. And we're going to write down all the numbers that multiplies, or pair of numbers that multiplies to be 24 which are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Because that's negative, we're going to subtract these two numbers and find the difference. 24 minus 1, 12 minus 2, 8 minus 3, and 6 minus 4. And look for the one that gives us a difference of 10, which happens to be 12 minus 2. In this case, the value of b, or 10, is positive which means that we're going to take the bigger number, or 12, where the plus is, and take the other number, or the 2, 
where the minus sign is. For the level three in factoring quadratic expressions, I like to talk about something what's called the difference of squares. When you're given a squared minus b squared, notice that there's nothing in between the a squared and the b squared. That's when it's going to always equal a plus b times a minus b. The reason is a times a will give us that a squared. And then the b times negative b will give us that negative b squared. However, a times negative b will give us negative ab. And then b times a will give us that ab, where ab and negative ab cancels each other out, leaving us with nothing in between. Take a look at this example. When we're given x squared minus 36, we could rewrite that as x squared minus 6 squared. Then, because there's nothing in between x squared and 6 squared, and also because we have x squared and 6 squared, just like in the format of a squared minus b squared, we could go ahead and use the difference of squares formula and start with x plus and x minus. And we'll put the 6 here and 6 here, and then we're done. Following that example, let's do another one here. Here we have 4x squared minus 9. We want to go ahead and rewrite that so that it would be in that format, a squared minus b squared. So we're going to change that 4x squared into parentheses. 2x squared, where 2x is the a that we have earlier, and then change that 9 into 3 squared. Once again, we're going to start with two sets of parentheses where we have plus minus. It's always going to be plus minus when it's a difference of squares. And we'll put the 2x, what's in the parentheses, here and here as well. And then all you got to do is take the 3, put it here the plus 3 and then minus 3. To check we could go ahead and FOIL or multiply 2x times 2x is the 4x squared that we have right here and then the 2x times negative 3 will give us negative 6x and then the 3 times 2x will give us that 6x where they cancel each other out and then lastly we have positive 3 times negative 3, which gives us that negative 9 that we started with. For the level 4 of factoring quadratic expressions, notice that we no longer have a 1 in front of the x squared, we have a 2. However, it's only level 4 and not level 5 because the value of a, or the coefficient of x squared, is a prime number, meaning there are only two numbers that could be multiplied to get us that 2 that we want, which is 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. In this case, it doesn't really matter whether you put in 2 in the front or 2 in the back. So here we'll start with the 2x in the front and x in the back. As we did before in level 1, since the c term or the third term is positive, the signs are going to be the same. And because the second term or the b term is positive, they're both going to be positive. Next. We're going to write down all the numbers that multiplies to become a 10, or the pairs of numbers. And it, it's not that bad. It's just simply 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. So let's go ahead and begin by trying the 1 and 10 into here and here. Here's how we check. We multiply the two inner ones. 1 times x is 1x. And then we multiply the two outer ones, meaning the 2x and the 10, which are 20x. And if we add the 20x and the x, we get 21x, which is not the 9x that we're looking for. So that's going to be the wrong one. Let's try the next one. If we try the 10 and 1, because we've done the 1 and 10, we have to go ahead and switch and try the 10 and 1. We'll go ahead and check once again, 10x here, and then the two outer ones, 2 times 1 is 2x. 10 and 2 will give us 12x. Again, not the 9x that we're looking for, so that's not going to be the 1. Let's go ahead and try the 2 and the 5. So if we put a 2 here, we get 2 times x, which is 2x. And then we'll try the two outer ones, the 2 and the 5, which is 10x. 10 and the 2 gives us a 12, not the 9 that we want. That's no good. Finally, we'll go ahead and try the 5 and the 2. Again, switching that 2 and the 5 into a 5 and the 2. 
If we multiply the two inner ones, 5 times x, we get a 5x. 2 times 2 will give us that 4x, which adds up to the 9x that we want. So we know that's going to be the correct factor form of 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. So our second example, let's try and factor 5x squared plus 13x minus 6. Notice the coefficient of x squared is 5. So we're going to put a 5 or 5x in the front and x or 1x in the back. Because this is negative right here, I'm going to put two opposite signs, plus and minus. However, when the coefficient of x squared equals not 1, we need to go ahead and consider both the plus minus and the minus plus because it does make a difference. So the reason, this is a level 4 question. First, let's begin by writing down all the numbers or two, the, the pairs of numbers that multiplies to 6, which are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. And this time, I like to go ahead and try and use the 2 and 3 first. So we'll put the 2 in front next, right after the positive, and put the 3 after the negative. And we're going to check. 2 times x is 2x. 5x times negative 3 is negative 15x. If we add or combine, we get a negative 13x, which is not the positive 13 that we wanted, so that's not going to be the correct one. Next, I'm going to go ahead and switch the order, put the 3 after the plus, and then put the 2 after the minus. So again, 3 times x is 3x. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. And if we add or combine, I get a negative 7x. Again, not the positive 13 that we want. What do we do? Well, let's go ahead and try the negative positive, where we put a 2 after the negative and the, pos uh, the 3 after the positive. So if we were to multiply negative 2 times x, we get it negative 2x. And if I take the 5x times 3, I get 15x. And 15x and negative 2x, if we add, we do get that positive or plus 13x. Therefore, this is going to be our answer. Here's level 5 in factoring quadratic expressions. So the reason this is level 5 or a difficult one is because of that number 6. 6 can be gotten by multiplying 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. So we have to consider all the cases where it's 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. Let's go ahead and try this first. Once again, because this is plus the signs are going to be the same. And because this is positive, they're both going to be plus or positive. Next, all the numbers or all the pairs of numbers that gives us 12 is 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. So we're going to try the 1 and 12 first, where 1 times x is 1x. 6 times 12 is going to give us 72x, which of course is not going to be 17x. Next, we have 12 in the front, 1 in the back, meaning we flip the 1 and 12 into 12 and the 1 like this. And let's go ahead and check once again. 12 and x, 12x. 6x and 1 is going to be 6x. 12 and 6 gives us 18x. It's close, but not close enough. So this is not going to be the answer either. Next, we're going to try the 2 and the 6. So 2 and the 6 gives us 2x. 6x and the 6 will give us that 36x, which is 38x, not the 17x that we want. Next, it's time to try the other way around. We need to put the 6 in the front, 2 in the back. 6 and the x will be 6x. 6x and the 2 is 12x. 6x plus 12x is 18x, but it's not. 17x. Then it's time to try the 3 and the 4. Hopefully it works. So we'll put the 3 in the front, 4 in the back. So we have 3x from the inside. And then 6 times 4 is 24x. 3x and 24x is going to give us 27x, not the 17 that we want. And then lastly, we're going to switch the order and put the 4 in the front, 3 in the back. So 4x from the inner, 
and then 6x times 3 is 18x, which is 22x. So that's not it either. Unfortunately, 6x and x does not work. Let's try the 3x and the 2x. Once again, the pairs of numbers that gives us a product of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4, just like before. Let's go ahead and try 1 and 12, where we have 1 times 2 gives us 2x. 3x times 12 is going to be 36x, which is 38x. That's no good. Let's go ahead and try the other way around. Put the 12 in the front, 1 in the back. So 12 times 2 is 24x. 3 times 1 is 3x. 24 and 3 gives us 27x. That's no good. Next, try the 2 and the 6. 2 and the 2 gives us 4x. 3 times 6 is 18x, which is 24x. No good. And then let's go ahead and switch the order. Put the 6 in the front, 2 in the back. 6 times 2 is 12x. 3 times 2 is 6x, which is 18x. That's no good. And then we'll try the 3 and the 4. 3 times 2 is 6x. 3 times 4 is 12x. 6 and the 12 give us 18. That's not it. And then finally, we'll switch the order. Put the 4 in the front, 3 in the back. So we go 4 times 2 is 8x. 3 times 3 is 9x. 8 plus 9 is 17 that we wanted. So that is going to be our answer. Unfortunately, we had to go through every one of them before we come to the answer because we ended up trying the 4 and the 3 in our last step. So as you can see, this is the proper way of doing it. There are tricks and shortcuts of factoring trinomials, but the methods that I've showed you in this lesson are the proper way of doing it. In my next video or my next lesson, I'll give you the shortcuts.